Well, let me say good morning. This press conference has been called to express several points. First, there will be a vote tonight on the mayor's budget, which we anticipate will be approved. A part of the budget contains $2 million, which will be allocated towards the purchase and storage of body cameras for the Rochester Police Department. Second, because of this anticipated approval, we are requesting and expecting a seat at the table to participate as members of the community in the final drafting and review of body camera policies. This is essential. Several months ago, we submitted body, ca body camera policies and protocols to the mayor and the members of city council for their perusal and use as a basis for body-worn cameras. We realize that body cameras are not a panacea to right all wrongs, but a tool to assist in curbing police misconduct and to improve police community relations. This is a win-win for both the community and the police. Third, we would hope that other police departments, in particular Gates, Reese, Shiloh, Brighton, Arondacoy, Webster, and the Sheriff's Department, will develop the necessary policies for these cameras. It is necessary that this happen. If there are no policies, individual officers can turn body cameras on or off at their own discretion. If that is so, then what is the use of having cameras? Fourth, Rochester has the opportunity to be the leader on body-worn camera policies. It has the opportunity to serve as a model for the nation in righting wrongs. The development and facilitating of body-worn camera policies was initiated over a year ago, prior to the rebellion in Ferguson. Now, those who assisted in making body-worn cameras a reality are the Genesee Valley New York Civil Liberties Union, Enough is Enough, Greater Rochester Community of Churches, the Green Party, the Downtown Presbyterian Church Justice Team, Metro Justice, Teen Empowerment, United Christian Leadership Ministry, and many other organizations such as Rochester Acts, whose names are listed on an attachment to this statement. And so we thank all the organizations and their representatives who were involved in this process. And fifth, I want to thank Mayor Lovely Warren and city council members for funding body-worn cameras. This is an idea whose time has come. It's a technology, not a panacea, which we hope will ensure accountability and transparency within the Rochester Police Department. Six, the implementation of cameras are our first step for our proposal for a community safety agenda, which includes the following. Body-worn cameras. Two, a viable independent civilian review process with subpoena power and independent investigative authority. Three, a curtailment of the stop and frisk, that is racial profiling, which continues in Rochester and Monroe County on a daily basis. Consent to search and anti-racism professional development training. Since then, we have added, one, the need for an independent special prosecutor to investigate incidents of police, use of excessive force, and also fatalities caused by the police. And two, a look at fatalities resulting in the use of tasers. The Rochester Coalition for Police Reform with its member organizations 
shall continue to work on improving police community relations as well as serving to monitor incidents of police racism and excessive use of force. Let us all stand together for better Rochester and let's end institutional and structural racism in our city, county, state, and nation. Thank you. Any questions? When you talk about having a seat at the table, specifically I'm referring to the fact that Adam McFadden is uh, chairman of the Public Safety Committee. Uh, met the mayor, uh, Vice President Loretta Scott, uh, these all have uh, decision-making power and also Chief Simonella. Now, from what I understand, they are developing policies as we speak, whose basis is our policies. Uh, but we are hoping that in the final drafting of these policies, that we have say-so as to what is be included. Yes, absolutely. The safety agenda will be a part of that. And that's going to be a harder struggle relative to the Independent Civilian Review Board because people have a stake in keeping that system as it is. We feel that it needs to be changed. Sitting down 
and formulating what those policies should look like would be something totally different. We did research all over the country uh, relative to those policies, and we're certain that we have developed some good policies which can be used by uh, the Rochester Police Department. So again, I just want to say thank you for including the body cameras in the budget for this evening. Thank you so much. We have a wonderful celebration of the baptism of Councilwoman Jack Gertie's son, little Juanito. We pray that he'll be a starting, uh, following in his mother's footsteps with great vigor and ethics. I'm a member of UCLM, United Church uh, Ministries, uh, and I do, like uh, Reverend Alexander, thank you for passing the um, $2 million for the police uniforms. Next step, of course, is to uh, develop policy for those uniforms, and we look forward to working with you on that. I want to tell you a little story, it's that was not too short, too long. One day I was visiting with a friend of mine in the corner of Seabird Place, uh, and I, I'm a gentle person, you know, like the Pope, St. Francis, birds and bees and all that wonderful stuff. And I was talking to my friend, um, Pocholo, we call him, Hip-Hop de Conce, he's died since then. And all of a sudden he looks up, real frightened. I turn around and behind me there's a person all dressed in black with an automatic machine gun in his hand. Now that was very frightening. He told me, that's all right. I'm okay, you're okay. But he could have been from Iran. He could have been a, a, a terrorist. It was a member of the police department's drug uh, department, and he was doing a raid there, which is perfectly legitimate. But if he had a, a badge on, at least the said Rochester Police Department would have been so big scared. All he said was, you're okay. Well, if I wasn't a member of Israel, I guess I'm okay. He could have blown me up. So anyway, we look forward to developing policy for those cameras when it's on and when it's off. And um, it should be on most of the time, we believe, for the um, members of the uh, police department because during the raids, they are accountable. Uh, Tracy, did you please say that? Okay, that's all I want to say, really. So we want the police to be accountable, and that's why we want them to be wearing uniforms and turn it, have it turned out. on this project for a while. Um, I'm Alan Daly and I'm a uh, pastor in the United Church of Christ and I'm also the executive director for the Greater Rochester Community Churches. Uh, and as part of that I also participate with the, the folks at UCLF. And uh, <clears throat> I want to thank you for the work that, that you and the city council and, and everybody that's done on this uh, on the project for the body cameras. Uh, it's an important piece. And I think the one thing I wanted to just stress right now and this evening is that it is just a piece. Um, places where they've been, ex where they've worked, places where they've been effective, it's been because they've been part of an overall initiative uh, that was <clears throat> that was implemented to improve transparency and to improve communication and improve cooperation. And what it's done is it's, it has lifted this up and. Um, and we're looking forward to, to working further with, uh, with the police department. We've had a number of conversations with them already, and we're looking forward to being able to continue this as, as we move forward with this project and others. Thank you very much. Greetings, Council. I'm Alex White. I live at South Clinton Avenue and own some businesses in the city. I want to thank you for the body cameras. The funding for this is going to go a long way towards solving problems and fixing our streets. Now I hope you will work to get proper policies and civilian review board to finish up the project. But I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about libraries and recreation. 
This year in the budget, we cut libraries by 0.3% and recreation by 1.2%. This continues a long trend of either not increasing to keep up with cost of living or actually cutting those two services. Right. The weird thing is that libraries bring in $16.5 million of dedicated money, supposedly, and yet only 11.3 of it is used on the system. Recreation has been declining for years, and along with li libraries, and it is odd because it's been proven that libraries provide uh, daycare for parents, they provide safe places for kids, they provide a place, reading classes, computer access, and much more. Well, recreation provides all this plus very positive role models for the kids. Studies have even shown that if the kid we can get children to read at the sixth grade level, it dramatically reduces their chances of ending up in prison. And study after study has shown that recreation, longer hours, and particularly weekend hours, reduces crime. Yet, we continue to cut. I've attended a lot of neighborhood meetings, and in most of these, someone will complain about drug sales or kids on the street. The one thing that I know Reckon Libraries will do is provide a place for kids to go that's not on the street. And thus, I can't understand why we continue to cut them every year. Perhaps it's time to start thinking about more evening hours and weekend hours because that will solve many of our city's problems. Thank you. Hi, good evening. Um, I'm the co-chair for uh, the Coalition Police uh, Reform. Also, I sit uh, with UCLA, member of UCLA. About five years ago, I watched police get out of hand and attack my life status. And I am so grateful for this body camera budget for us to make this happen for citizens because I see a lot of things that's going on in our city. Like for example, Quentin King is another example of another citizen or young black male that's been attacked by police officers. I'm not attacking all police officers, but we have a certain minority of police officers that's been on the force for years that do this throughout the city, okay? I sit there and witness, witness this young man in court go through a lot of things when well, this police officer couldn't even remember his own statement. And thank God that the judge was smart enough to see through the nonsense. I watched, I went to prison for three years because of a false police statement. My, unfortunately, my, my record was, was overturned and my record is clean and I'm back to work. But I'm a citizen, a veteran. Now, body cameras is one thing that we can do, but we can do another thing. And you have, as chair of public safety, is hold these guys accountable. Let's stop making excuses for these officers because they both deserve to accept us as citizens. <laughs> not their own personal beliefs, their own personal, I would say, prejudices against young men and young people in the city. This has to stop. I'm a homeowner in the city. I pay taxes. And this is crazy. And a member of the police, of coalition police reform, I would do everything in my power to make sure this don't happen to no other citizen, no other taxpayer, yet more young black men in the city. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Dave Sotopadius. Uh, I'm a Kansas Street in the city. And I'm here representing the Center for Disability Rights as well as the Regional Center for Independent Living, uh, both of which are members of the Coalition for Police Reform. So, first of all, I'm going to advance. Thank you for passing the budget that is funding for the police cameras. Uh, I really do appreciate it. We really do. And again, as has been said, it's not a panacea, but for some of the issues within the disability community and their interactions with the police department, it is a good step, and it's definitely needed. Um, and it's really important that policies are put in place to make sure there's no loopholes so that basically we're not throwing our money away. And whether you take C uh, CPR's recommended policies, which it should, there's been a lot of research done, a lot of work done, and if you follow the tracks on how we did all this, you'll see it really is uh, the appropriate way to go. But even if whatever the, the policies that are put in place, I'd like to explain to you why it's so important that whatever happens with them, there can't
can't be loopholes. They have to be a tool that makes the police accountable and that uh, makes the public accountable. And I bring that from the disability community because we continue to hear stories of uh, our large deaf population that are abused and assaulted when they can't hear police officers' uh, commands. And there's other things that need to go involved in that in terms of training and the, the incident with tasering and, and, and the mental health issues and, and how police interact with folks with other disabilities, especially cognitive disabilities. There's a lot of work that needs to be done there too. But these cameras are really important in dealing with some of that and maybe helping in training. And having the appropriate policies is really, really important. And it's also going to save the city from a lot of lawsuits, as well as a lot of broken bones. And, and, and in a relationship with the public that the police don't need. So I know there's going to be pressure on you guys to, to put in certain things that will weaken this, and I'm asking you to, to stay with this. And if you have any more questions on this, I know I'm going to see most of you at CDR's legislative breakfast on June 30th at 8 a.m., right? If you didn't get the invite, if something happened, they got lost in the mail or whatever, you can get hot over that Hello, my name is Gail Locke. I live on Melrose Street. I'm a member of downtown Presbyterian Church across the street and the Coalition for Police Reform. And this is a, a variation on the theme. Uh, and just to reinforce what's been said about the allocation of the $2 million for the budget toward body cameras and for the inclusion of the Coalition for Police Reform as part of the shaping of the policies and the protocols for the use of these cameras. As you know, the, the issue is, is, is one that's a great concern in our whole community. And we really owe it to the taxpayers to do everything in our power to make sure that these dollars are used wisely. And that way, the police and the community can move ahead with trust that's so essential in, in Rochester. It's a real opportunity to bring our community together in the healing of police and community relations. And the coalition, as you've heard, the Coalition of Police Reform under the leadership of Reverend Lewis Stewart has spent months working on this issue. And they are eager and ready to partner with the city to make the effective use of the body cameras and make this a reality in the city of Rochester. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I'm here tonight to speak on behalf of Take Back the Land and uh, also Joe Woods, who is a resident facing possible eviction or, or well, actively facing eviction right now. Uh, I also want to say bravo to the uh, body cameras and even more bravo to meaningful policy shifts and engagement and community engagement with the police. Um, one of the things Take Back the Land, uh, among others, has been doing is to awaken banks like Mid First, for example, to negotiate in good faith with residents who have been unable to make full mortgage payments during the downturn and job losses created by the very banks themselves. Right now, Joe Woods of 394 Webster Avenue is facing eviction yet again, as he did some 16 months ago. He has uh, tried to encourage me first to work with him. He's tried hard, too. He's been very diligent about that. Their response so far, I mean, uh, maybe a year ago, was, sure, Joe, we'll work with you. Just Give us $108,000 in cash, please, uh, and you can have your house, which is now raised to $28,000. That was in 2013. This has uh, been Joe's home for 25 years, and uh, for which, during most of which, he paid a mortgage to mid first and whoever held the mortgage before that. <clears throat> the uh, bank is not uh, obviously not negotiating because the pretty typical of what banks are uh, uh, doing. Uh, they did, they, they're dealing with uh, all of this on kind of a wholesale basis instead of trying to deal with individual homeowners. Uh, Joe doesn't plan to leave, take back the land, uh, I mean leave his home, and uh, take back the land is there to support him and help bring him first to the talking table and have a reasonable and honest conversation. Uh, I also urge folks, the council on leave the, uh, this over there, for the council to email me first um, uh, with your support uh, for Joe. And folks here can do that by emailing DAC as in Democrat Chronicle, only it's not Democrat Chronicle, it's a mnemonic device there, 
GAC at midfirst.com. Thank you. Craig Walker. Thank you very much. Thank you. 